Welcome back to the Napoleonic Stacking Channel. I'm the Napoleonic Stacker, and in this video, we're going to do multiple unboxings of silver, and I'm going to show you what I picked up from my local coin shop. Let's get to it. So I've already cut into this first package so we can see what we've got here. This is actually an order that I placed from Atmex. And looks like Krugerands. Lots, lots of Krugerands. And they basically had a deal on the off-quality Krugerands, which were almost $4 less than the Brilliant Uncirculated. And these are considered Brilliant Uncirculated Krugerands, but they may have milk spotting or they may have um, some scratches. So let's take a look at this one. Yeah, there's definitely a little milk spotting up at the top here. Looks like a few scratches. Not not altogether in, a, in bad shape. A little bit of milk spotting here. Um, the silver has been dropping steadily over the course of the last month and a half and along with every other market. And I have been buying all along the way. And basically, there's no telling where silver prices are going to go short term. I've heard people talk about it dropping to possibly $18, uh, $19 per ounce. I think it's a possibility we could get down that low, but uh, ultimately, it's, it's going to go back up. Silver is going to recover at some point. And wow, look at this one. This one's like really bad milk spotted. But ultimately... I only I got it for just a couple of dollars over spot and for a sovereign bullion coin that's uh that's a really good deal. And of course spot price has dropped on these since I purchased them unfortunately, but again that's going to come back up at some point. I really love the South African Krugerands. I think they're fantastic coins. They're one of the most recognized bullion coins in in the entire world. This one you can see has got some milk spots. Looks like maybe some fingerprints. But uh, but basically all of these are going to be off-quality Krugerands. But because of the price I got them for, I'm pretty happy to have them. And this is the 2022 Somali Leopard. I'm going to get these out of the packaging here. Much better. So the Somali Leopard Series coins are issued by Atmex exclusively, and it's an offshoot of the Somali Elephant Series coins that have been so popular over the course of the last few decades. I've been collecting these since, I believe, 2018, which was the first issue. And you can see it's one troy ounce of silver. And on the back it says Somali Republic, 100 shillings. So I really like these coins. They're, you know, I get one each year. And they're just cool to collect. As far as the Krugerands go, the South African Krugerands, even though they're off quality, a lot of times when I buy these BU, they end up milk spotting anyway. And sometimes on Atmex's website, you can get um, abrased coins or milk spotted coins for a much better price. And oftentimes when I'm buying bullion from Atmex, that's pretty much the only way that I do it because it's typically the only way you get a fair price from that company. Don't get me wrong, Atmex is a great dealer, but typically for numismatics or hard to find coins. If you're looking for just straight up bullion, with Atmex expect to pay the highest premium. So before we get to the next unboxing, I'm going to show you some items that I picked up from my local coin shops over the course of the last few months. And I just picked these up recently. These are 10 commandment bars. And I got both of these, one for my daughter and one for myself. You can kind of zoom in here and see the Ten Commandments, in case you didn't know what they were. But uh, very cool, very cool bars. They're one ounce of silver. And when I saw them, I felt like I needed to get them. And one's going to my daughter's collection and one's going to mine. And the next piece I got is actually from a pawn shop. Now, this is a 1996 American Silver Eagle, and this coin was mixed in with all of their other Silver Eagles, 
And if you don't know, the 1996 is actually a key date for the Bullion Eagle. And I managed to get this coin for right at $39.95. And it's easily worth in this condition $60, $70, possibly more. It does have a little bit of uh, toning up there towards the top and kind of around the edges just because whoever owned this before kept it in the original packaging. The, the Mint didn't package it like this. They probably got it from a third party, but I'm probably just going to leave it in the case. And I figure I had pretty good luck getting this 1996 Eagle for only 39 bucks. And other than that, I also picked this up from my coin shop today. This is a King George III one crown coin. And if you didn't know, King George III is the monarch that we fought our war of independence against if you live in the United States. And this is a one crown piece from 1820. And oddly enough, 1820 was also the year that King George III was, uh, was the year that he died. But on the back, you can see it's got St. George fighting the dragon. Iconic scene. Very cool coin. It's also got some pretty nice toning to the upper left-hand side of the coin right above his head. And if you take it out into the sun, you can actually see even more toning deep under the surface. So this is this has not been a cleaned coin. This is in very good condition. And I am super, super excited to have it. And I don't really have a whole lot of British coins, so glad to have this piece. This last coin shop pickup that I made is a Republic of Panama 20 Balboa proof coin. I really love the Panamanian Balboas. This was actually struck by the Franklin Mint under the authority of the Panamanian government. And it's almost four ounces of silver. You can see it's 0.925 purity. And on the reverse here, you can see the coat of arms of Panama. And 20 Balboa is the denomination. And on the front, you can see 150th anniversary of Panamanian independence. And it shows 1971. I'm not sure exactly who this guy is, but I'm sure he's probably an important Panamanian figure. And just a real nice, chunky coin. I've also got a few of the older uh, Panaman Panamanian Balboas, which I really love. But this is definitely one of the cooler ones just because of its size and the fact that it's a proof. But let me know what you think about the Balboas in the comments section below. All right, so this last package we're opening comes from Provident Metals. And I haven't bought a whole lot from Provident since they were bought out by JM Bullion. But you're going to see here in a minute why I had to get these. Provident Metals every once in a while has some pretty good deals. And this is a tube of coins that are Napoleon themed. If I can actually get them out of here, they got all these packing peanuts. And I already have one of these, but I decided to get a bunch more since they were on special. So let's take a look at what we've got. All right. So these are brilliant uncirculated St. Helena coins. It says the East India Company on the bottom, 2021. And these are the Napoleon Angel coins, struck for the 100th anniversary of the death of Napoleon. And just an absolutely beautiful coin. It's got the, the B up at the top, which is one of Napoleon's symbols and a symbol of the, the French Empire. And then you've got the East India Trading Company logo at the bottom with the laurels. And you've got the Napoleon grave there with the angel. And just a really cool looking coin. And they only made these, of course, for one year. So I decided to pick up about 10 of them. So there you have it. All of the Napoleon angels lined up in a row. All in all, I've added roughly 29 ounces to the Silver Grand Armée in the last month. And as silver prices continue to fall, I will be picking up more silver. One thing to be aware of if you're buying silver is the premiums. 
make sure that you're shopping around, finding the best deal. And if you have a local coin shop near you, check them out because local coin shops are typically very competitive. And you may be wondering, why are silver premiums as high as they are? Well, ultimately, it breaks down to supply and demand. Most of the silver spot price is derived from the paper markets, not the physical. And what's been happening in the stock market with this massive sell-off, people are having to cover their, their margin calls. And the easiest way to do that is to liquidate their paper silver, liquidate their paper gold in order to keep themselves solvent. And as a result, it's driving metal prices down. The one thing I can tell you is to be patient. If we look back at the great financial crisis, silver went down with everything else initially. And it took it almost two years for it to find those new highs. And there was a massive bull run in silver and gold starting right around 2010 on into 2011. And this was right on the heels of one of the, the biggest recessions our country's ever seen. And looking at where we're at today and what it looks like we're going into, I foresee a bull run with silver. And it's not going to be sometime in the near future, I don't think. But definitely within you know the next 10 years or so. And at that point, that's going to be the opportunity to take some profits off the table. But that's what I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I know it's been a hot minute since I posted my last video, but the times give me a chance to kind of work some things out in my life. And I'm going to be posting more regularly again going forward because I've got just so much to share with you all. And I'm so thankful for the community. And also for those of you that have stayed to the end of the video, I just want to give a special thanks to you. And until next time, Napoleonic Stacker, signing out.